June 1900, the Republicans gathered in Philadelphia for the National Convention. President McKinley was easily renominated, largely because the nation prospered. Teddy Roosevelt was selected as his running mate. Roosevelt was nominated not because he was governor of New York State, but because he was a war hero and therefore could add a lot of pizzazz to the Republican ticket. The election of 1900 was a rematch between McKinley and William Jennings Bryan, the Democratic candidate in 1896. Bryan hoped to win this election by making the Philippines a central issue. On November 6th, Bryan carried only four states, and not even his native Nebraska. McKinley won by a landslide. In the Philippines, U.S. troops had posed as prisoners of war to infiltrate rebel headquarters. Three weeks after President McKinley's March inauguration, they captured rebel leader Emilio Aguinaldo. There has been enough blood, enough tears, enough desolation. By accepting the sovereignty of the United States, I believe I am serving thee, my beloved country. Emilio Aguinaldo. While war continued in the southern Philippines, there were few skirmishes around Manila in the summer of 1901. President McKinley appointed William Howard Taft the first civilian governor of the Philippines. Big Bill Taft called the Filipinos his little brown brothers. McKinley described Taft's mission as one of benevolent assimilation. What was established here very quickly were schools and the introduction of American methods of education, English language, except that the American administration in the Philippines passed a law which made illegal anything that was anti-American, whether it was written, spoken, or even a, a picture. The Philippine flag was banned, although Filipinos found other ways to continue the struggle. Ten days after President McKinley's death, the residents of Malangiga, a tiny village 400 miles southeast of Manila, attacked the local U.S. garrison. While U.S. soldiers ate breakfast, the church bells rang a signal. Filipinos brandishing machetes emerged from their hiding places. Forty-eight Americans, two-thirds of the garrison, were butchered. To the Filipinos, this was seen as a victorious battle on the side of the revolution, but to the Americans it was seen as a, atroc an atrocity of the gravest proportions. On the orders of General Jacob Smith, U.S. troops retaliated against the entire island of Samar, where Balangiga is located. I want no prisoners. I want all persons killed who are capable of bearing arms against the United States. I'd like to know the limit of age to respect, sir. Ten years, General Jacob Smith. And his troops followed the order to the letter, uh, burning villages, killing men, and actually even women and children, and converting Samar into really a howling wilderness. Oh, a soldier in the blasted Philippines. They say I've got from brothers here, but I don't know what it means. I like the word fraternity, but till I draw the line. Oh, he may be a brother of Big Bill Taft, but he ain't no brother of mine. In Patangas, a province south of Manila, U.S. officers herded all non-insurgents into fortified zones. Everyone outside these zones was considered an enemy and captured or killed. The similarities to Spanish methods in Cuba were unmistakable. Leading anti-imperialist Senator George Hoare insisted on public hearings to try those responsible for these atrocities. Three army officers, including General Jacob Smith, were court-martialed. You have sacrificed nearly 10,000 American lives. You have slain uncounted thousands of the people you desired to benefit. You have established reconcentration camps. Your statesmanship has succeeded in converting a grateful people into enemies possessed of a hatred which centuries cannot eradicate. 
Senator George Hoare. 1902, after more than three years of fighting, Filipino insurgents surrendered to the United States. By the end of the war, Americans simply had no stomach for any more colonies. Even Roosevelt himself was forced to conclude that the Americans were not an imperial people. He said that the, the Philippines had become America's Achilles heel. He should have listened harder in 1898 to a lot of people who were saying at that time, we're going to acquire these foreign people about whom we know very little or nothing, who are way, way far away, who have a culture that is not a part of ours, that sit just south of Japan, they're good. If we have those islands, it's going to draw us into a war in the Pacific. And it's going to be a very bloody and very tough war to fight. In World War II, Japan conquered the Philippines. 60,000 Americans and more than a million Filipinos were killed driving the Japanese from the islands. Soon after, the United States granted the Filipinos their independence. 